Hey, what's up, guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today I'm going to be doing a Magic Spectre deck profile. So I'm really excited to show you guys this one because this was actually suggested to me by one of my patrons, Awalt. And this deck is a awesome control-based pendulum deck that plays some really amazing tech cards. I'm really excited to show you guys this deck because it's a very easy deck to learn when you're playing pendulums, and it does really well at controlling the board. So without further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell in there so you can come part notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards like in your name description and single video getting a signed card to mail and even getting to request a deck profile every single month your patron along with test and so without further ado let's get straight on in this but before we do definitely give a walt some love down in the comments down below for suggesting such an awesome deck so first off we're going to be playing three copies of magic specter bon boco or magic specter raccoon what this card does is when this card is normal summoned or special summoned you can add one magic specter monster from your deck to your hand you can only use the effect of this card once per turn and then all of your magic specter monsters share the ability that they cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects which is really good to be able to just protect them from all of your opponent's card effects we then play three copies of magic specter cat Magic Spectre Cat is really good in this deck too, because when this card is normal or special summoned, you get to add one Magic Spectre card from your deck to your hand during the end phase, which is pretty good. It's a little bit slower than your Bomboko and some of the other cards that you're playing in the deck, but you need to play three cards of it or three copies of it because we do play an awesome tech card in here that you're going to need it for. We then play three copies of Magic Spectre Ogama. Ogama is really good in the deck too, because what this card does is when this card is normal summoned or special summoned, you can set one magic specter spell or trap directly from your deck but it cannot be activated this turn which is totally fine you're usually going to search a trap anyways and then activate it during your opponent's turn to interrupt them or give them a negate we then play three copies of the magic specter qb magic specter qb is really an insanely good card i love seeing this card in my opening hand because when this card is normal or special summon you get to add a magic specter trap from your deck to your hand which is the best cards to add in this entire deck to your hand is the magic specter traps because you have basically a solemn judgment and a banish a monster on the field which is a really good thing to, for this deck to have we then play three copies of magic specter crow magic specter crow has the ability that when this card is normal or special summon you can add a magic specter spell from your deck to your hand which is really good just to basically get their cards to your hand. And the reason I said at the beginning of this video, this deck is very easy to learn is if you guys haven't noticed, all of your magic specters do one thing. They all search from Bomboko grabbing a monster, this grabbing during the end phase, setting one to your side of the field, and then searching traps and searching spells. You basically have the entire lineup where they all basically search. None of them have pendulum scale effects either, which is very easy to remember if you're trying to teach somebody how to play pendulum. And it's a very interesting deck to have as a control based deck so for the other monsters that we're playing in this deck we're playing three copies of sam bell the star bounder sam bell is a really really good card in this deck because it has the ability that's a pendulum effect that if you have a pendulum card with the same level as this card in your other pendulum zone you can destroy the card in your other pendulum zone and if you do special summon this card to your side of the field now, you might be thinking, this deck card just breaks your scales. Why do you want to play that? Well, it's a wind level 3 spellcaster, which comes in very handy in this deck for some other tech cards we're playing, and it gets you an additional wind spellcaster on your side of the field, which all of your cards require you to have on the field a wind spellcaster to activate any of your magic specter spells and traps. So this card comes in very, very handy. And if a monster is normal, or if a monster is special summoned to your field while you control the, uh, this monster, then you can special summon one monster in your hand with the same level as the card that you just summoned. And you can only use each effect of this card once per turn, which is a really good effect for this card to give you additional monsters and be a level three, because all of these right here are level threes, and then the rest of these over here are level fours and you have all sorts of different scales from seven all the way down to two but usually you're going to have a two and a five scale to go into your plays we then play three copies of luster pendulum luster pendulum is a fantastic card in this deck because it has the ability to once per turn if you have a card in your other pendulum zone you can destroy that card and if you do add one card from your deck to your hand with the same name as that card so for example if i had a copy of my yada in my other pendulum zone 
and I popped the copy of Yada using this, I could then add another Yada from my deck's hand, essentially putting a card in your extra deck to then go into a Pendulum Summon later on to get that extra copy back out of the deck into your extra monster zone to use for Link material. We then play three copies of Messiah. Now this is actually the card that AWOL wanted the deck based around, and so I had to figure out a good deck to include it in, and I figured Magic Specters were the best deck to actually include this in. Because what this card does is it is insane. Basically, this card single-handedly can stop Eldridge and Sky Striker in its tracks because it has a pendulum effect that any card sent to the graveyard is banished except for monsters, which is a great effect to just stop your opponent from using spell and trap heavy decks that recycle their spells and traps because they're banished instead of sent to the graveyard. It also has a really good monster effect to give you additional boss monsters. It has the ability to reveal this card in your hand to add one other pendulum monster from your hand or one card from your pendulum zone to your extra deck and if you do special summon this card to your side of the field. Now it's very important to use this effect last because it has the ability that if another monsters is normal or special summon while you control this card send that monsters to the graveyard during the end phase of this turn. So you always want to follow up your plays with Messiah as your last summon because you don't want to send your own cards to the graveyard. You want to let your opponent walk into the Messiah and be able to send their cards to the graveyard. So it's a really good effect for this particular card. And since we don't have Magic Specter Kirin right now, playing Messiah is a fantastic boss monster in the deck. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. So for the spells, we're playing a single copy of Double or Nothing because it's a really good card to play in this deck because you have so many level fours that you can actually pendulum summon to your side of the field and OTK your opponent because all you have to do with this card is basically summon Utopia Double, detach your material from the Utopia Double, summon Utopia on top of the Utopia Double, and then it comes out at 5,000, attack your opponent, negate the attack with the effect of Utopia, and then drop Double or Nothing, essentially swinging for a 10,000 attack point monster, which is a great effect to be able to just OTK your opponent but it can't attack directly that's the only downside to utopia double and it would be absolutely busted if you could so basically it turns your one monster your two magic specter monsters into a otk where you can basically throw a 10,000 attack point monster at your opponent play a single copy of terraforming terraforming is fantastic in this deck so we have two different field spells that we play in this deck so this card is really good we play two copies of Magic Specter Cyclone. Cyclone is really good as well because you get to tribute a Wind Spellcaster monster and then target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it, which is really good. And a lot of your cards have that ability that you have to tribute a Wind Spellcaster, which is why we play all Wind Spellcasters outside of the uh, Draco Slayer and the copy of the Messiahs. So this card is really, really good. We play two copies of Majesty's Pegasus. It has the ability that all of your Magic Specters gain 300 attack and defense, and you contribute a Wind Spellcaster monster to special summon one level four or lower Magic Specter monster from your deck. The really cool thing about this is to throw your scales on your side of the field, normal summon out any of your Magic Specters and get a search, and then immediately link it away for something. And then after you do that, you can pendulum summon it back out of the extra deck, which is really good to be able to get that monster back out of the extra deck, and it helps a lot to get those monsters back on the field. We then play two copies of Secrets uh, or Secret Village of the Spellcasters. This card essentially, as long as you control a Magic Specter monster, your opponent can activate spells, and just about every single one of our, or actually every single one of our Magic Specters is a Spellcaster. Even our copy of the Sand Bell, the Starbounder, is a Spellcaster. Again, the Luster Pendulum and your copies of Messiah are the only ones that are not Spellcasters. So this card comes in very handy to lock your opponent down. We then play for the last three spells. We're playing three copies of Ties of the Brethren, which is why we're playing three of each of our Magic Specters in this build. Because basically with Ties of the Brethren, you're able to normal summon any of your Magic Specters onto your side of the field, pay 2,000 life points, and then special summon out either. If you're going for the level three route, you're going to special summon out a copy of Bomboko and a copy of Sambel, along with your copies of your uh, cat to your side of the field to get those searches. Or you're going to special summon out a copy of Ogama, QB and your copy of Yada to your side of the field with this card to get basically three monsters on your field and three effects, which is just great. But you can't attack the turn you activate this effect, but that's totally fine because you're basically setting up your board for interruptions and negates. So that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. 
So for the traps, we're playing two copies of Magispector's Tornado. This card is fantastic as well in the deck. You treat a win spellcaster, then target a monster your opponent controls and banish it. I wish this didn't target, but it does unfortunately target. It's still really good because you can normal summon the copy of Bomboko to your side of the field or have any of your Magispectors on your side of the field and then basically pop a card and banish it, which is pretty good. And then we play three copies of Magispector Tempest, which is the best one in the entire build. But it has that, which it has the ability that a monster, uh, if a monster would be su uh, special summoned or a monster effect is activated, tribute to win spellcaster monster negate the summon or activation. Um, and if you do destroy that card, which is really good because it's basically solemn judgment for the cost of one of your magic specter monsters that you can then just pendle on something back next turn. So it's really good. So that's it for the um, that's it for the traps. Let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, we're playing a single copy of Totem Bird, which just basically negates spells and traps by detaching two materials. One copy of Fortune Tune, you play this so you can go into Zeus, and it's a really good card to basically just throw in defense position and then let it battle or battle your opponent with this card. And then during main phase two, you can then make Zeus. One copy of Lightning Chidori because you can bounce cards with it. Heartland Draco because your scales count as spells so you can attack your opponent directly with this. And then make Zeus. Downer Magician, because you can make it on top of either one of your Totem Bird or 40 uh or one of your 49 to be able to go into Zeus on main phase two. Utopia and Utopia Double. The reason you play these is for the combo that I told you guys a minute ago about the Utopia double combo to be able to attack your opponent with a 10,000 attack point monster. A single copy of Zeus, because Zeus is just really good at board wiping in certain situations where you're only gonna have two Magic Specters on your side of the field. And you can make a copy of number 49 or Heartland Draco to attack your opponent directly or battle a monster and detach a material. And then summon Downer Magician during main phase two, make Zeus, and then board wipe, which is really good. We're playing a single copy of Access Code Talker just to get us additional pops. Appaloosa for the link arrows, which is really good in this deck to have those link arrows and give us monster negations. Celine, because all of our monsters are spellcasters and pendulum scales do count for this card, which is really good. Unicorn to spin stuff, uh, Phoenix to pop spells and traps, a copy of Win the Charmer, Verdant, because what you can do with this card is it's a win monster. It searches pretty much any card in the deck when it's destroyed, and it has the two downwards arrows, which is really good, and a single copy of Ignister. Ignister is really good because it's going to spin cards to target one of your pendulum monsters on the field or one card in your pendulum zone and destroy it, and if you do shuffle any card on the field into the deck, it is a Dragoon's Out, which is really, really good, and it's a fantastic card for this build so that's it for the card or that's it for this deck guys i hope you enjoy it it's a really fun deck and definitely give awalt some love down in the comments down below for suggesting such an awesome deck i really love magic specters it's been on the list for me to actually profile for a very long time but with awalt suggesting a deck that could play messiah we actually went for it and just built magic specters around that card so anyways guys this is Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell on there so you can come part of the notification squad. And we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.